This is our five flavor checklist to take your cooking to the next level. We've been professional chefs for more than 20 years and these are the secrets that will elevate your cooking. If you master this, you will ensure that every dish you cook is a great dish. We're gonna make a quick easy dish just to illustrate these flavors and just to show you how simple and easy it is, assuming you know what they are. So we're starting off with our base flavors here. This is not one of the five flavors, but this is just the base flavor of any dish or the foundation flavor. We're gonna go with green onion, garlic, ginger, and a little bit of chili. So we're gonna add in our veg to this dish before we get into seasonings. So we're just going with some carrots, some are julienne, and some are finely diced. And we're gonna go with some tender stem broccoli. Okay, first and foremost in terms of seasoning, and this is the first flavor profile, is salt. Part of the cooking process, very important to use salt to help the veg release their flavors and to come together to form a symphony. <coughs> Is all salt the same? Like what about fine salt or coarse salt? No, Cor sea salt is always better. It's got 92 minerals, whereas an ionized salt or a table salt typically only has two minerals. So do choose a, ta a sea salt. Steam cooks twice as quick as just frying. So we're adding a little bit of water to turn the water to steam, to steam the veg. It's really important to season in conjunction with whatever veg we're using here. Carrot are the second sweetest of all veg, and broccoli is part of the brassica family, so it's slightly bitter. So at the moment, we've got some bitter, we have some sweet, and we have some salt in the pan. So we're gonna season in conjunction to these three vegetables. This dish is purely to illustrate these five base flavors. We're adding in beans, packed with protein, carbohydrates, and they're really gonna bulk out the dish. We've got one tin of cannellini beans and one tin of red kidney beans. And again, when cooking, it's really important to season as you go. Those beans aren't salted, so we're gonna put in a little bit of salt just to help allow the flavor to cook into them. So once again, each of the component ingredients do add to the flavors, these five base flavors. The tomato's gonna add a little bit of umame. It typically has a slight umame taste to it, and the coconut milk is gonna add a sense of sweetness. Now it's time to get into our flavor checklist. Number one, salt. Dave said it earlier, what was it? No amount of fancy cooking techniques can make up for an undersalted dish. And that is a philosophy which we stand by. It really helps to bring the flavors together. So super important, take a spoon, take the spoon away from the dish, taste half it. Oh, that tastes bland. Take a little bit of salt. I'm going with a coarse salt here. I'm gonna put a pinch through it. Mmm, tastes much better. So now I know I'm gonna season my dish. So that's a simple beginner's way, it's almost like having stabilizers on, um, so you can season as you go. There are many different types of salt. They can be table salt, Himalayan salt, they can be black sulfur salt, or else they can be salty foods which you can add to a dish. Traditionally in conventional cooking, cheese would be added. We don't use cheese, but you could use capers, you could use olives, you could use plant-based cheeses. All these are delivering a salty seasoning to any dish. Okay, the second flavor which we'll always test towards at this stage of the dish is sweetness. We've added coconut milk, which is really gonna give the base sweetness and a lot of creaminess to it. In this context, by adding a little bit of maple syrup, whether it's agave syrup, date syrup, sugar, any type of natural sweetness that could be dried or fruit or as well. Some raisins. We can put in All a of these raisins. will help accentuate the saltiness and help balance the harmony within these five base flavors. So I'm gonna go in with half a teaspoon, half a tablespoon of maple syrup. And that's again going to provide a backdrop with which will accentuate, it'll provide contrast to the acid, it'll help balance any chili and it will provide contrast. These five flavors are not in exact opposition, but they're almost, the more you can find harmony within each five, the more you can find a balanced, perfectly seasoned dish. Okay, the next up is bitter. Bitter is typically one of the five base flavors which is least used but it does help balance the dish. We're gonna use bitter greens, spinach in this case, it'll wilt down and create a creaminess to the dish. Where do people find bitter in most? Like what, what, what does bitter look like to most people? Bitter, most people don't know what bitter is. Most people, bitter is typically personified as green vegetables. So the broccoli in this case does add a bring of bitterness and we're adding spinach here. Spinach isn't as bitter as kale or chard or um, other types of brassicas like cabbages, but it really does help add a, a subtleness to the bitterness of this dish. And in the case of this, don't worry, it will cook down and provide a lovely creamy texture. Number four, we have acid. So acid is anything with a pH below seven, which sounds very technical, but typically that's illustrated through lemon, lime, vinegar, or alternatively, you can have acidic foods. So you might add orange juice, lemon juice, you might add some sauerkraut, or fermented some form foods. of fermented foods. 
In the case here, we're gonna go with simply juice of half a lime. Okay, the fifth flavor profile is the most important one in my context. <laughs> it's umami, and umami was only discovered in the last 20 years. The direct translation, it's a Japanese word, and the direct translation in English means deliciousness, and it's epitomized by that bacon-like flavor. My perfect umame food, Fluid. Food. My perfect, <laughs> my perfect umame food is tamari. And tamari is a wheat-free soy sauce. It's amazing. We are not sponsored by the tamari industry, but we love it. It's a byproduct of the miso industry, and miso itself is the perfect umame food as well. So both of these plant-based versions, you do have tomatoes and mushrooms of a certain amount of umami in them. But in this context, I'm going to go with probably two tablespoons of tamari. And it will bump up the salt slightly. Uh, but it is, umami is the personification here, tamari is. And miso comes in many forms. You can get miso based on barley, on rice, uh, on lots of different grains. You can get some white or you can get some darker miso. I'm adding in white here. It's just gonna add a sweet, like deep kind of rich deliciousness that'll hide in the background. Just to recap in terms of the five flavor checklist, you have sweet, salt, bitter, acidic, and umami. Right now, we're gonna balance them and find that harmony. We've got each one in the dish, but right now we wanna final tweak them just so we get it seasoned to our palate. Because seasoning is not one generic perfect seasoning. Every one of us is different. And sometimes we want each dish to have a different personality. This dish, we want it to taste balanced. And what distinguishes a good cook or a good chef is their palate and their capacity to balance these five base flavors and the six secret ingredient flavor, which we're gonna tell you very shortly. Mm, that's actually pretty good. Like it's sweet, it's round, it's balanced. Mm. The only thing I could say that needs a little bit of acid just to cut through it. I would throw a little more salt. Okay, well let's go salt yep. and acid. Yep. So a little bit of acid, I'm gonna go with a little bit of lime. But tasting and developing your palate is super, super important where you can identify, oh, that needs a bit, that's very fatty, it's got not, not enough salt. So salt is always which we'll start with. Salt is very much the one to lead with if you think the dish tastes a little bland or under seasoned. Umami is the one to follow. If it tastes too fatty, add a little bit of acid. Acid will help cut through it very, very much so. Um, and obviously sweetness will help balance the sweetness. The final flavor, which is our sixth hidden component, Ooh. is texture. And texture might sound crazy, but in terms of your palate and how you taste and experience foods, the crunch or the crisp or the bite all of these directly impacted it, and we consider that to be the sixth basic flavor. So here's a couple of things which you can do to really bump up the texture, the sixth flavor profile. So these are some crispy or some toasted sunflower and sesame seeds. I put a little bit of tamari and a little bit of maple syrup. So not only are they being a bite of texture, they're gonna provide a crispy crunch and a little umami bomb on the side. So I'm just gonna put a few of them because I want them to be a little bit of pocket. Okay, so I've got our toasted seeds down the side. I'm gonna go with a little bit of avocado, which is gonna provide that fatty, creamy backdrop. And then we're gonna go in with a little, again, just variety of texture. We're going in with creamy. This is kind of creamy, but fatty, and this is just creamy. We're going with a little bit of coconut yogurt. And finally, we're adding, this will have the acidic element. Fermented foods is often considered the forgotten food group. And by adding a little bit of sauerkraut in this context, we're adding purple, this bright, vibrant color. We've got the texture of that raw fermented food. It adds that acidic component and it really accentuates this sixth base flavor profile. So there you are, a beautiful dish to illustrate the five basic flavors and even the sixth one known as texture. We've been professional plant-based chefs for more than 20 years. And if you wanna learn more, we've got a recipe club. It's 2 dollars a month. It's got more than 600 delicious plant-based recipes and loads of lessons and support to encourage you to eat more veg. It's really simple, it's tasty, it's delicious, and it's low in cost. There's a link in the description to join. Thanks, Bill, for watching today. Bye. Bye. Cheers.